Hey guys, so this is going to be a real quick installation video for the OM617 belt driven vacuum pump. I don't think this should require a great deal of explanation, but nevertheless, I'll briefly go through this and hopefully give you some visuals on the hard parts. As you'll see here, there's some new stuff going on. I haven't announced any of the other stuff yet. I will here shortly. Got a obviously a new idler location whole new compressor bracket set up and another idler so that'll all be getting released here in the next coming weeks um, right now we're just going to focus on this vacuum pump though so as you can see it gets positioned down here where the original ac compressor was on the 617 so you're going to have this flat plate that's what the vacuum pump bolts to and then everything else is going to happen behind it all right so you're going to get your kit it's going to come with two brackets a bunch of hardware and a pulley so i'm taking a high quality steel canadian made pulley and i'm modifying that so it fits on our pump because i've tried all the smooth pumps i've tried the ford and the gm neither one of those give enough belt contact you can get slippage if they get wet not to mention those pulleys actually cost more than it takes for me to buy this power steering pump pulley and modify it for the vacuum pump. So it actually ends up saving you money having this custom ribbed pulley. And with the ribs, you'll never have any problems with slippage. As far as pumps go, the GM and the Ford both work. The Ford style from like a 7.3 power stroke is what you wanna use. And they're usually about $60. Right now there's kind of a shortage with the everything being short in the world so um, you might have to pay more than that but just know if you're really looking for a deal they're usually about 60 bucks and the gms are usually closer to 80 or 90 i've seen them up to 120 and then later on in the six liter power stroke vans the ford vans like the e whatever e250 those used a pump that has a lot longer snout and those will not work with this kit so you'll get your your hardware and your plates here so this is going to be our plate that our pump bolts to so you'll take you'll have two m10 bolts with lock nuts and you'll install those through the pump through the plate you can decide which way you want to do it uh, the, the better bet is to actually put the bolt through the plate and then through the pump so should the nut ever come off, the bolt would still be held in place by the G-forces while you're driving down the road. This bracket has this slot. This is what gives you the clock ability to adjust your pump. And if you decide you do want to try to do this with the V-belt setup, this is what gives you a little bit of tensioning capability with the pump. So for the installation of this plate, you'll start with your M12 bolt going through the plate. You'll take your thinner of the two spacers and then this will go through the block. And then this spacer goes up here. And then this plate. Then your washer. And then your lock nut. And this is what gives most of our strength and rigidity to this plate and therefore the pump. But then this hole down here for the 3 8 bolt is what prevents it from rotating and gives it the remainder of the rigidity to keep the pump from moving in or out. The 3 8 bolt, this will actually go through the pump itself, but installation is the 3 8 bolt, the washer, it goes through the back plate, and it goes through the aluminum spacer, comes through our front plate, then it goes through the vacuum pump, and then you put on your washer and your lock nut. Now you will have to probably clearance a little bit of material off your vacuum pump housing to clearance for this spacer. Don't take any more out than is absolutely necessary, and I would use a flap disc or a belt sander so you can finesse it off and have smooth grinding marks. You don't want to have any um, sharp gouges or cut marks in your your pump casting you'll have to leave both of these bolts loose until you've determined where you're going to clock your vacuum pump housing at then you'll um, 
first, then you can tighten both of these down to lock it in place. And don't forget your two short M8 bolts go through the slotted holes on the back into the engine block. All right, so once you have the pump bolted on, everything is solid, you're gonna take your pulley and you're going to install it onto the shaft here. And this is a power steering pulley. So you, you, you will use a power steering pulley tool to install and or remove this. Um, installation simple. Um, it's not gonna be a super tight press fit. It should go on fairly easily. Um, if it is tight, you can always throw this in the oven and heat this up. About 300 degrees is sufficient. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna just get it on there kind of aligned You'll thread your stud in and then put your, um, your pusher tool on and you'll start pressing this on. So you're going to press this on until these ribs are lined up with your crankshaft. And if you really wanna do it as precisely as possible, you can take a straight edge and lay that across and measure basically from, from this outer edge to the middle of your first groove do the same thing with your crank pulley. Do the math to find the difference. And then once you have your straight edge on there, you can measure the gap that you need to have to get those two grooves lined up. So you're gonna treat this exactly like you would the power steering pulley. You just have to, I wanna say eyeball it, but you can be more precise than eyeball it. You can, you can take some measurements and use some feeler gauges or some calipers to get it pretty precise. And then what this bolt is for is simply just to prevent it from ever backing off. So you're not gonna, it's, it's the exact same thing as the bolt going into the power steering pump. It's, it's gonna just be there. You can put blue Loctite on it to keep it from ever vibrating out. But as far as tightening it goes, you're just snugging it up against the pulley. You're not torquing it down super hard because that would actually push the pulley further on. You're just snugging it up and letting that Loctite set up to lock it in place. And then the last thing, once the pulley is on, your 3 8 fine thread bolt here, that's going to give you some adjustment as to where you want to clock the pump. So you'll notice there's a slot in this plate, and that's because initially I wanted to make this a bracket that would work for our V-belt setups too, and I couldn't figure out exactly how that was going to work with a tensioner. So I put a slot in this plate to give this just enough tensioning ability, if you will. So that's one of the reasons that slot's in there. However, I then later decided against the V-belt. Um, I'm kind of stepping away from that at this point. I'm no longer going to offer any V-belt support really for the OM617. I'm going to focus solely on the serpentine accessories. The other reason is because as you can see here on this Toyota, this pump gets very, very close to our steering box mounting setup here on the frame. So that little bit of clockability gives you enough adjustability to hopefully get this to fit in any application. So again, the pulley's on, you get the pump clocked where you want it, and then the last step is to tighten up this 3 8 bolt, and then you are done. Simply hook up your vacuum hose, and you're ready to go. So thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you soon for some more videos on the other serpentine accessories I have coming out.